So good morning, we are uh, over here in Amsterdam, in the center of Amsterdam. So when you hear some, some, some noise in the background, uh, don't mind about that. Uh, we are at, uh, at, at Helping, so thanks for, for having us over here. Thank you for coming along. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so please give me some more information. What is Helping? Uh, who are you? Uh, what's your background? Yeah, uh, my name is Floyd Samons. Uh, I run essentially with, together with my co-founder, uh, Helping Netherlands specifically. Uh, Helping comes from Berlin originally, uh, where the concept came into being in January last year. Um, very nice concept. We use Rocket Internet at the very beginning to get started, uh, and their initial investment is also from them. We also used their IT resources to get going very quickly. Uh, we went live in Berlin in March, end of March, and that quickly escalated to multiple countries um, all over Europe initially. And the Netherlands went live on the 28th of May. Um, the concept, actually very simple. We are, some people say we are an Uber, but then for cleaners, uh, Uber for X, you know, the usual uh, analogy in that sense, a bit different, but we do link private cleaners to private households and we make sure we provide as much comfort, security and safety and ease of use for both these parties so they can essentially work together and they can clean someone's house on the long term. Okay, so, so, so uh, the background is also in, 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 in Berlin and, and, and work with the internet. Um, how did the intentional expansion go? Uh, so, and, and how did you came in the picture of, of Helpling? Uh, incredibly quickly uh, the, the international expansion went. Uh, within a year we picked up 56 million euros in investment and we're currently in 14 markets, 13 of which we are market leader. So um, it really have been, has been a growth focus to go as quickly as possible and have a really large uh, a global footprint as quickly as possible. Uh, I myself, I used to run uh, my own company in Malaysia for a year, which is a financial comparison platform. Uh, before that, I worked in Groupon during its gr growth stage. I started at a small little lunch table with 10 people. No one had heard of Groupon. And by the time I left, it was quite internationally famous and large. And I had an international function. Uh, and I worked in six countries over a period of about two and a half years, between three and six months uh, during that time. In that time, I worked for Mark Sommer um, as well, who is one of the uh, um, owners and founders of Rocket Internet, one of the three brothers. He basically pulled me back to Helpling after having done Malaysia for a year. And as goes with Rocket, this really took two weeks uh, for me to talk to him and then to get started. So uh, that was also quite quickly. Uh, and I myself joined in September uh, last year, so a little bit after uh, the company was founded and my co-founder started at the very beginning. Okay, and, and, and what motivated you to start with Helpling? Uh, so what in, in, in the story of one of the brothers uh, triggered you to say, okay, I'm going to do this? Uh, a couple of reasons, actually. Uh, one of the most important ones, I really have to want to like the con concept. Uh, and that is a couple of reasons why I would like a, con a concept. First of all, marketplaces uh, um, really is the future uh, when it comes to internet. We used to have the more standard e-commerce models, and now people are really starting to see marketplaces are the future. Uh, you know, it doesn't require a lot of capital investment, and also quite flexible, and you can scale exponentially if you do it well, and if you manage to add value to both parties in a multi-sided platform. That's something that really interests me from a business perspective, because we can really do a lot with that. And my history uh, is also quite in that particular area, my, my level of expertise. Uh, secondly, very important for me, uh, I'm not like the full entrepreneur that puts everything on the line, because at the end of the day, I am in service of them. What I find really important is that you can have a positive impact on society, and um, which is the business space that you are in, to also add value to whoever is using your platform and provide if possible, a radical improvement over what the market currently has as a solution. Uh, that can definitely be said for something like Helpling. Uh, we do offer quite a lot of advantages to both the cleaners and the households, and I find that incredibly important. And we've just started tapping into that benefit as well. One of the key things I do day-to-day -day basis is see how we can expand that for both parties. Okay, and, and, and uh, from the moment that you say, yes, okay, I want to do this in the Netherlands, uh, what then happens? They say, okay, good luck and, 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 and we'll talk to you in a month, or uh, is there already a, 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 like a, a, um, a concept of, of or how does it work? So, I mean, initially there is something of a business idea and market research. The very first thing you do is market research. Uh, Rocket Internet generally believes don't do too much market research. You just have to find if it's possible, then go for it. Don't spend you know, months on building a business plan that you could also spend uh, um, actually doing it and then seeing if it works. Of course, you want to look at initial potential. Netherlands is perfect in that sense, in that market, because it was 98% black market, clean household. There's barely to nothing uh, in terms of regulation. It's really poorly managed. There is a solution to make this better in the current uh, rules, but that hasn't been used properly. So very clear, you have an instant market and people are really looking for this kind of service as well. Something better than a little note at supermarket, right? And then first step really quickly becomes, okay, there's potential. You go, here's the money. 
see how far you get in a couple of months, we'll talk. Okay, so uh, uh, how far did you get to the last couple of months? Uh, very far. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of potential because we see that also with uh, the customers coming in, also the amount of partnerships we can do because right now in the Netherlands, we are the only platform or company that does anything with uh, cleaner household in someone's household because otherwise it's just black. So okay. that provides a lot of options for these companies to do types of cooperation as well. So you really see that, and we managed to grow quite quickly initially, uh, uh, and, and still are uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, just because there's so much potential there, both on the cleaner side and on the customer side. Okay, and 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 uh, what are the benefits of being uh, under the wings of of of, of Rocket Internet? But I guess there are also a downside because everybody see, okay, it's a big organization, you've got 56 million investments, so show me the money. So what are the benefits, and what is the downside of being uh, under the wings of a Rocket? Uh, Company. There's quite a lot of benefits, I would say. I mean, now we're also a little bit in the position where they have a minority stake. So unlike some other Rocket uh, uh, ventures that joined them and, and, and were part of them since the beginning, most of them are more traditionally managed uh, by Rocket. That's much less the case for us. We're quite separate uh, in that sense. Initially, you get a lot of benefit from using them, however. Uh, first of all, very easy access to funding because they, have, they know all the people. Secondly, there's a couple of core competencies that they are just amazing at. No one really can do better than they. First one is the initial focus, that you really, really do this quickly. Core competency is really built on speed, also in escalation and deploying, for example, the IT side of it. So it literally took their existing team a month and a half, two months, and you have a platform live, a website, instead of having to spend half a year on building a website and lots of cash, uh, basically. And the second also, I mean, online marketing is kind of a core competence uh, behind Rocket Internet and um, connection with the consumers and how to actually get to customers and add value to them and do it in the most efficient way. And this is uh, a core competency we manage to leverage heavily so you can grow a lot faster in the beginning. So instead of taking one or two years setting all of this up, we manage to do it in months because of the help. And, 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 and what does it mean for, for your own education process? Because when, uh, li like when the IT is at a different uh, uh, a place, uh, physically in, uh, in, a, in a different place, you, uh, you're not really learning together with building the system. Uh, do you think that, 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 that that's a bad thing? or? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I'm less involved with the actual programming of code myself, right? But that's also not really what I do from a, from a work and business perspective. Uh, Helpling specifically is an extremely localized business. Every country has their own regulation, rules, and market setup that really makes you have to change the business model quite dramatically on a per country basis. So because of this, a lot of countries, uh, pretty much every country has a lot of input on even how the website looks like, even if that team is centralized. So what actually happens on the website, what features we ask for, what we want changed and not changed, is still in our control. So even though we don't do the code ourselves, we do say what the website should be like based on market conditions in the Netherlands. Okay, okay, and, 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 and uh, take a further look at the platform. So uh, what is the value that you add as platform for, for both sides? Right, uh, quite a lot. Uh, so Ooh, from a customer course. perspective, of course. Uh, so from a customer perspective, as I said, 98% of the market used to be black market. Uh, in this market, uh, it costs on average 10 euros 50 to pay a cleaner. Of course, there's no form of security or insight or help or assistance, absolutely nothing. And it's also not so easy to manage uh, from that side. Uh, through our app, you can book in 60 seconds. You have a booking, you can get a new match of a cleaner. Number one barrier for customer also is a little note at the supermarket. I don't trust it. You know, it's, it's still, you, you let someone into your home. This is quite intimate. A lot of people don't want to do this uh, in this way because you don't know who it is. Through our platform, we make sure that all the helps, all the cleaners that use our platform are heavily screened in advance. We have to get a police clearance, test cleans, they have to get experience uh, uh, checks in advance as well. Uh, we ask for references that we call after, et cetera, et cetera. Once they're on the platform, any new match, we pull a cleaner forward uh, first that has very good customer reviews. They always get first, uh, basically. And then any rebooking, even the same cleaner can easily be done with a single click. Payment is done online automatically 72 hours after the booking. There's customer service seven days in the week if you have any questions or issues. If the helpling is sick, we try to get a different cleaner for you so there's no real hassle there. Uh, all these kind of benefits. Also, for example, insurance against damages. So if your Ming vase or extremely expensive TV falls over, breaks down, and there's an explosion, we make sure that you get money for that. And then the cleaner also does not need to be hurt by that. That's really the customer side, so ease of use, reliability, and, and these kind of benefits. And the cleaner side, uh, also quite a few benefits. Uh, first of all, maybe important to say, because we provide this uh, reliable and, and screened solution to uh, getting your own cleaner, 
there's a lot more people that actually want to get a cleaner. We see that 89% of all people that come to us, they indicate, I have never had a cleaner before in my life. And they would not have gotten it had they not had some kind of easy to use and trustworthy solution. So we really created a lot of additional work that did not exist beforehand. Uh, secondly, I mean, they make 10.50 uh, an hour in the black market. Through our platform, they make between 11 euros 12 and 11 euros 92 an hour, which is enough to also buy their own secondary, uh, uh, you know, corporate benefits and so forth and securities, uh, uh, basically. And then the number one challenge in the market as a black market cleaner is to get additional customers. A little note doesn't really work. You can knock on people's doors, but that takes a while as well. We make sure that on a platform they indicate themselves on a little map. I would like to work in this area. On agenda, I would have these hours, I would like to have these filled. We make sure it's completely full with our marketing and the scale benefits that we can provide uh, uh, in that sense. That's a very big plus uh, for them. Also, they benefit from the insurance against damages. Also, they have customer support uh, seven days a week. And also, they can use an app and so forth to manage their own uh, appointments and the like. And also, uh, maybe important to, ma uh, to mention, uh, in the Netherlands specifically, there's a lot of government subsidy cutbacks in home care. People are losing their jobs. Right now, uh, pretty much half of the cleaners that use our platform come from this area, and they see a temporary safety net, so to say, for, from being unemployed in this particular area, and they can still make good money through our platform. And do you already apply also on a different a group of, of cleaners? Uh, because maybe the 98% of black cleaners, uh, uh, um, um, are they also into your platform? Because uh, when you talk about communication, I think uh, the most most uh, cleaners I know uh, they don't speak uh, Dutch. Mm. Uh, they uh, they can't write or read Dutch. Um, uh, so that's also a maybe a gap for them to 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 enter the platform. So uh, on which target group of, of cleaners do you do you uh, do you target? Uh, we don't specifically um, uh, we don't specifically say yes to, to specific groups and no to specific other groups. It's really on an individual basis. We do have some requirements, however, that may cause a bias in there. Uh, for example, communication, super important. You know, Dutch people are uh, individually not the best employers because they find it difficult to tell people whose job it is to do it in a specific way or communicate their expectations to their employer, which in this sense is their cleaner. So we want to help with that. And communication, therefore, is extremely important uh, at the very beginning. So fluent Dutch or fluent English is absolutely required. Otherwise, they can never discuss what a customer finds important, and then also the result is you know, less likely to be what the customer wanted, uh, basically. Yeah. Very important. Uh, then, of course, the level uh, of experience that we can also check, uh, very important, and they have to get a police clearance, which also means they're completely legal citizens and the like, and they have not been in touch with the Justice Department for uh, you know, stuff that would impact the cleaning, uh, uh, basically. So uh, we do select on these, and as a result, we do see that people with more experience or, uh, for example, from home care, where they used to work, are by far most likely to get through the screening process. Right now, only about 15% actually gets through that uh, selection process, so it's, it's quite strict. Yeah, yeah, so there will be also a really big part of the, the workers uh, that are not available to work through your platform. Yes, uh, at least in the Netherlands, um, and from our perspective, it's a little bit lucky, but it also shows the potential there is in the market. There is absolutely no lack of people who want to become a cleaner. Um, they're easy to find uh, in that sense. So we do get a lot of people uh, applying to our platform. So your biggest challenge is to find customers where they can clean? Yeah, that takes a bit more time and effort from a marketing perspective. Yeah. Okay. Of course, we always try to balance it as much as possible so everyone is happy, but I would say that the clean side is definitely a bit easier. And, and uh, how many people are working over here at Helping in the Netherlands? Uh, we have 12 full-timers here at the office. Then we have another 12 full-timers at the Berlin office, which are Dutch people, uh, but they work there and have a central manager and so forth as well. But they do report to the Dutch entity specifically. And I'm thinking customer service there, for example, sits, sits mostly in, uh, in Berlin. And additionally, we have a, a, almost a legion uh, <laughs> today of uh, students, salespeople, that really go door to door and go to events and the like to explain helpling as a concept to potential customers and hopefully sign them up as well. Of those, currently there are 38, but we are scaling up at the moment. Okay, so, so, it's, so, so it really costs quite some manpower and girl power to really convince the clients to, to, to start. Do you think this will also be uh, just a really uh, a thing that will be uh, changing, let's say, in two or three years uh, when people are more uh, common to, to book a, a cleaner to a platform or a driver or whatever? Yeah, exactly, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're also going much more into the refer a friend type area. I mean, uh, traditionally, this is a market where you rely on uh, very often on your neighbor or your family member to say, 
yes, uh, this is a good clean and maybe you should take it too. Very important part of the, of the market. So we're going much more into that specific area to make that possible for individual cleaners as well. Uh, that'll become a much bigger thing. Right now, it's, it's um, yeah, semi-aggressive marketing uh, in that sense that we, uh, you know, we also do mass marketing and so forth just to make people aware. Once that has happened and people are aware, also through partnerships and the like, then it'll be much, much more organic in that sense too. And how easy is it to copy your concepts? Uh, relatively easy, uh, must be said. Uh, on the other hand, there's a lot of benefits to having scale. If you have more cleaners, there's a lot more marketing to do, you know, uh, but also a much more efficient and effective uh, uh, planning of uh, optimizing uh, cleaners' agenda so they can do as many bookings as possible, but also take into account travel time and all these other kind of details. So there's a lot of efficiency gains that we can gain there from having our size and also having that much more developed algorithm and uh, IT uh, in the back end. Otherwise, everything has to be manual and it's not uh, um, super efficient. So uh, there's definitely a lot of benefit to having that position already. And secondly, also, uh, it's a market where there's a lot to learn. Uh, in the very beginning, we made a uh, pretty critical mistake uh, that I can absolutely share with you. I'm happy to. Uh, and that is we thought cleaning is something like a commodity. Right? You just sell a cleaning package and, and that's it. Right? That is not how home cleaning works. It's about the value that we as a platform can add to both parties that manage their own work. Essentially, we create relationships. It's, uh, a friend of mine said once, it's almost like a dating platform, but then the relationship has to be a longer one. So instead of selling just a cleaning package, we have to make sure that one person, one person marries to another and they can work together on the longer, longer term by providing enough value to both these parties. And, and then how do we manage to, to uh, because uh, I, I, I really agree uh, you're a matchmaker, so you make a match between demand and supply. And what way do you make yourself, uh, as it is important that's also for the next weeks, they will also book to the platform and don't say, okay, let's exchange numbers and we'll arrange it ourselves. Yeah. And then we'll, uh, go into the Black Circle again. Yeah, a very important question. Um, we bought Hassel recently, and Hassel is one of our competitors, and they have a lot of numbers on this specifically. And they show that churn is very low for this specific reason. Uh, there's a couple of reasons behind this. Uh, first of all, the customer pays two euro something an hour for a lot of benefits that we want to pro that we provide to them: insurance against damages, uh, seven days a week support, uh, replacement cleaner if the person is sick. You can rebook or change your booking or schedule uh, with clicks on your app, like really done really quickly. No more cash money at home. All done automatically online all these kind of benefits and especially the ease of use which is more and more important in today's world where people want to have an app for everything uh, and just you know, click and done and be done with it to, to arrange everything. Now it's possible with cleaners also. Once you're already in this mode, there's a huge barrier for people to think, you know what, let's make this way more complicated and do it back over the phone in a traditional way. On the cleaner side, we see something similar. A lot of benefits and then the fact that they can manage their own work to the ease of use of this platform and, and the app and also the insurance against damages they have. But most important, the number one barrier to uh, uh, yeah, becoming successful as a cleaner, as a private cleaner, even in the black market, is to get more customers. Mm. We make sure through our marketing and scale that we dump that can on the full uh, as much as they want themselves. And if they you know, take a customer away from us, we, we can see that as well, they lose that additional uh, customer base. And that can be quite damaging for them, even those that have been around for a long time. Yeah, and, and it's quite a high threshold for cleaners to, to enter your platform, but that's, that's to enter. Uh, do you also uh, repeat these tests uh, every year or what? Uh, sometimes, but that's <coughs> really on an as needed basis because our platform is self-reinforcing. So after every booking, even repeating bookings for the same customer, we ask feedback from a customer if they want to give it, and then you can rate a cleaner uh, on a five-star rating on various uh, topics, basically. And then if they get good ratings, then automatically a cleaner will be pulled forward if, an, if they need a new customer and have a gap in their agenda. And as a result, it's quite self-reinforcing. If there's a couple of really bad reviews, uh, maybe it happens to you know, you're sick a few times, or you know, that could, that, of course that can be explained and there's no problem. But if there's some, for some reason there's a no-show and the cleaner doesn't show up and there's no specific reason, or there's a couple of bad reviews, then we also review our partnership with this specific cleaner. You know, there's minimum requirements and, you know, we lose customers if uh, the cleaning doesn't take it seriously or is not able to perform adequately towards the household, then at some point we may have to decide to end our partnership. And how does your uh, rating system look like? Um, so the rating system is on a one to five star basis, uh, based on cleanliness, punctuality and professional attitude, communication. And also we ask, do you want to use this cleaner again in the future? Most people we see try maybe two cleaners on average, 2.2 cleaners on average, before they find a perfect personal click. 
So I really like, I like you and I trust you and you can maybe have my key and you can work at my house and then I can keep booking. And that we usually want people try one or two or something, maybe some two, sometimes three persons uh, before they get to that level. And a match made by a algorithm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So do you think also in the future it's, it's, it's maybe interesting to, to see, okay, uh, how can we make better matches? Because now it's, it's, it's more a practical match and based also on references uh, and reputation. But I think it's also very interesting to see, okay, maybe what kind of <coughs> uh, a person is this? Uh, because, th th because they can make a really much better match. Uh, the 2.2 the will, uh, will go down to maybe 1.4. So, uh, so it will also save you money. And in the end, maybe because you already add more value as platform, you can also uh, ask a higher rate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we see over time as well, the longer we are operational, some cleaners just do hundreds of people and have amazing reviews all the time. Technically, that we feel they should be able to make more money because they're amazing, uh, right? So eventually, we'll also start looking at things like multi-tier pricing. You know, how can we make sure that the really, really good cleaners, people can appreciate them more and they can also pay for it more so that the cleaner receives more of an income. And then people that start or maybe don't do so well, maybe they just go at a normal rate that we have right now and they can work themselves out to be better and we have this multi-tier pricing type system. So that's absolutely part of it. And more will be added to that as well. Some people are really good at ironing, some people are not so good at ironing. We want to make sure we see a separation there as well. If customers want ironing specifically and they think it's very important, I myself, I'm a terrible, terrible ironer, and I definitely want to help them who can iron well. Uh, really helpful for me. I want to make sure that whoever gets matched to me has this type of uh, a skill uh, set as well. There's also stuff we're going to implement. And what about uh, the, the, the making a better rating system? Because I think the five-star rating is, 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 is quite, but you see it at all, uh, all platforms, <coughs> it's quite a, a, a simple, maybe poor <coughs> way of rating. Because I, I think, especially with, uh, with cleaning, because some people, they, they, they think it's really important, uh, the communication, yeah. but they don't really really matter uh, uh, if they're not on time. Yeah. <coughs> so it really uh, depends on, on, on each individual customer what they think is important for them. Do you think they, there will also be some more flexible rating that you say as a customer, okay, this, this, these are the things I think uh, they are important for me, and based on that, we're going to look at the ratings of the cleaners. So we will uh, uh, bring more depth to this particular rating system. At the same time, we do see that by far the most important part of that rating system is how happy they are with the result of the cleaning. This is by far the most important. And we do have an overarching question initially that is also 90% um, of, uh, of the value lies in that overarching question, which is, would you like to have this cleaner again in the future, yes or no? You know, is this good enough for your long-term relationship? Or are you happy with this person? You can keep booking in the future. And this is really the main focus. And if we say no, then another cleaner has to be linked. And we can really see in performance over the, over the cleaners over time. The more complicated we make it, also the less people are inclined to go through the uh, uh, survey and questionnaire and points to give that rating back. So uh, making it as simple as possible, the more ratings we get, the more useful we can make that over time as well. So we will make it more complicated and more in-depth. We have to make it in a way that we don't lose response and lose input to actually use to optimize the platform. Yeah, and, and talking about your growth, uh, also intentionally, you're growing really fast. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in what way do you manage to, to, to uh, make it a healthy growth? Because growing is not really uh, hard, but growing also for the, for, for the, for the future, that's a really uh, a tough thing. So how do you manage that uh, yeah. as, as, as a helping international? Uh, uh, you can see a little bit on the board, uh, a little bit, uh, and, and the essence there, we really see our business as a kind of a relationship uh, platform, uh, the heart, hence the heart in the middle, that we want to add value to both these parties. The more we do that, the healthier relationships we create that stay over the longer term. Uh, at the very beginning of our lifetime, we wanted to do a, a really quick land grab and insane growth, uh, basically. That cost a lot, uh, and we did TV commercials and the like. Then you also tend to get a lot of people that maybe they want a one-off cleaning, maybe just want to try it, maybe only with a discount, and that's not really the kind of customer that starts those long-term relationships. So right now, we're really focused from a marketing perspective on those people that really do want weekly or bi-weekly and they want a cleaner in their home. And our most common target demographic group is basically a young family of people that just started working, maybe they just have a kid, they have some income, and they want to spend the weekend in a different way than cleaning uh, the house. Maybe they want to go to a beach and I don't know. Right? Great. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And uh, so that's really where our focus lies, is we keep those people, both cleaners personas and customer personas in mind. We want to add value as much as possible to both of them, so that really it filters itself towards getting the right people that are really looking for long-term relationships. And this sounds like a, like, a, like a great vision, but how do you do bring this in practice? So, so uh, uh, by uh, when you are hiring new people, you said, okay, we've got lots of people in sales, 
uh, students. Mm -hmm. um, and what way do you uh, give them the helping DNA and do you also focus on that? Uh, really targeting, pitch, and also mindset is incredibly important. So we talk to our people a lot, also those salespeople, to make sure they understand what we're really trying to do. They have to go to someone's house, not be a pushy salesperson trying to really stuff some, you know, a booking down someone's throat. The idea is to be almost a consultant style where you ask, look, what are your cleaning needs? Do you have a cleaner currently? You know, wouldn't you like to spend your weekends, for example, in a different way than cleaning? Or come home to a clean home after work, for example. And then say, okay, well, your place is kind of large. Maybe you need four hours uh, per week on a bi-weekly basis. And, and also really clearly explain how the concept works afterwards. So it's not our cleaner, it's your cleaner. You explain to the cleaner what you would like to have done. Cleaner will agree or not, you know, and then you find your own match that you can then keep booking. So it's really the mindset. You have to really get that into people's uh, mind. Also that sell us or pitch us or, or represent us in that sense so that we can really focus on the right people and get these customers in the right mindset also to know what they should be expecting. It's not a one-off clean, not a uh, cleaning service, really a relationship. Okay, and you also said uh, they're, they're not our cleaners, they're your cleaner. So uh, in what way, because I think one of the most interesting discussions that will start or, or will be big uh, the next one or three years uh, are uh, labor to platforms. Yep. Uh, so people, uh, 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 so you say, okay, we're just bringing to <coughs> together demand supply. So we're not uh, uh, our, uh, your, uh, uh, your worker, your, um, uh, uh, so, you're not, so, you, so you're, you're not working for us. Um, but when uh, like a cleaner is working 40 hours a week to the platform, uh, how do you uh, yeah, stand in this discussion? Right, <laughs> uh, so there is a rule specifically in the Netherlands that allows for this kind of thing. It's regeling dienstverlening in house, and we really connect those private cleaners to the private household. We're just a platform that puts them together and supports and facilitates them. Uh, this comes down to also the way you communicate with these people. For example, we have helpling t-shirts, right? We tell people, you can wear it if you want to, but you don't have to, right? We provide instruction videos. Again, completely optional. They can look into it or not, right? We provide tax input so they can do the tax at the end of the year. Also something optional that they can use. They don't need to necessarily because we don't, act, we don't have that active role as an employer. And that communication is incredibly important. Also the role we play in the setup of this relationship is incredibly important. Right now we have a legitimate place in its current uh, uh, setup from a regulatory perspective. There is, it is written down that we can do what we are doing currently in the setup, unlike some alternative uh, collaborative economy uh, platforms in that sense. So I don't think we are really at risk of, of morphing into something else. If it turns out that in the Netherlands eventually uh, we are forced to become an employer, uh, our role would utterly and completely change towards the cleaners. We would have to hire them as well, then, which is like any other cleaning company at 22 euros an hour. And we cannot provide all these benefits to both cleaner and customers in this specific form. One of the things I'm personally focused on uh, quite a lot on a week by week basis is talking with the government to see how we can actually improve the situation for these workers and also for the households then indirectly by making sure we come to an agreement on what the setup should be instead of pushing it into something that's traditional and legacy that would actually kill the benefits. Yeah, yeah. so you say, okay, the, 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 the biggest uh, reason why we are cheaper than the 22 uh, uh, euros an hour is that we don't uh, uh, have some in contract, but do we work with uh, with uh, freelance or uh, individual work? Essentially, yes. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, and you know, one of the risks you buy off normally with a, a big contract in that sense is to get make sure they have enough work, right? I mean, you just do a forty-hour contract, for example. Uh, we at least we one of the things we do, for example, is we manage the supply versus demand to make sure they are always full. That's one of the things we want to guarantee towards Helms. Yeah, and <coughs> and and what, what what other benefits do you do you do you uh, offer your uh, cleaners or the cleaners who are working through your platform? So good income, support, lots of work, uh, new customers whenever they want, especially if they perform. Uh, it's a very big pillar. Um, online easy management of their own business because what it comes down to, it is their own business. They have their own customers that they manage when and how and what. Big benefit also, especially in this day and age, is flexibility. Both the customer and the helpline can decide themselves when and how much they want to work. And if they have, I don't know, a recital or, we see a lot of mantelsorgers, people that do uh, uh, various works that is, tends to be quite flexible. And they want to have a job, an additional income, that they can move around or change as they see fit based on their weekly needs. This is something they can clearly do uh, through our platform. And, 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 and our helpline is really focusing, on, on, or completely focusing on cleaning. Uh, is there also a strategy uh, to expand that? Because I think there are many other uh, uh, possibilities. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Uh, right now we see biggest market we can really have an impact in is cleaning in the household. So that is going to be a focus for the, the near future. Uh, but we call it helpling and not cleanling because we do want to go into a lot of additional services. I mean, in the Netherlands, there's even a market to put IKEA furniture together. These things are all possible. Uh, and, and really from babysitting to gardening to really there's a lot of stuff possible. Getting groceries, doing piano lessons, you know, it's just a lot of stuff is possible and we definitely want to go into it. And do you think because uh, like when you're going to offer like uh, cleaning, uh, uh, music lessons, uh, 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 shopping and uh, uh, putting together IKEA furniture, um, do you think that they also have to uh, select on each skill different persons or, or, or uh, are you going to work like Josh Rabbit in, in the US that's they just have helplingers uh, who are uh, uh, who uh, that, that can help you with everything you want. Uh, really depends on the kind of vertical. Some of them really require skills. For example, cleaning is definitely one that requires a specific kind of skill set. A lot of people think cleaning are oh, easy. Everyone knows how to do it. It's always the same. We can see from customer feedback. Definitely, people think very differently about what is normal and what is not normal in the, in the cleaning in the household. So this requires skills and experience. So we can't use these uh, people just anywhere or we can't just grab anyone to do cleaning. Similar situation for babysitting. At the same time, we do see that a lot of the cleaners we have would very be willing, very willing and very able as well to do babysitting as well. So we can absolutely start cross-leveraging in the future, but that more will happen on a by-individual basis instead of just having a pool of people that can do anything and then just random tasks all over the place. We want to create specialism and also expertise that the service quality is high. So you all said you're also talking to, to the government, so what are you guys talking about? Uh, quite a lot of stuff, actually. Um, I mean, there's a growing problem in the Netherlands about unemployment, or at least the trend is not going so well in the last couple of decades. 600,000 people, mostly younger, younger and older people, unemployed. And we see there's a lot of potential for jobs in the Netherlands that do not work in a traditional labor type setup. You know, we have these say, oh, and all the secondary uh, uh, benefits and corporate benefits and so forth, securities, and then all these people that work in the black market without any of this, without any type of security, but there's a lot of work there. Purely from our platform, if you professionalize this and provide some level of security and ease of use to access these people, suddenly a lot more people are interested in booking this kind of thing. So if we find, come up with a labor structure that allows for this to be professionalized and provide security to these kind of workers as well, literally hundreds of thousands of jobs can be created. If you just look at cleaning, say that we were national or there were 10 other helpling-like platforms and we would make it national together, we could create 131,000 jobs based on uh, 20 hour uh, a week. Uh, that's, that's a lot of jobs uh, we can make. Right? So that's, that's a big one and we want to see how we can develop that further through this kind of platform setup that we can get all these people to work and at the very minimum provide them a way to get a full-time job afterwards. Because if they can prove and show that during this time they were working instead of in a black market where they can't prove anything, they're much more likely to get a job afterwards and we can even give them a positive review uh, yeah. and a recommendation. That's a very big one. And, um, and, and, and which part of these 130,000 jobs are uh, replacing uh, black market jobs? Uh, the, mo the majority of them, yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's 131,000, uh, actually 131,000 absolutely new ones. So um, there was a research done by uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers and Fabejo in the Netherlands what the effect would be of the Belgian Dienstenscheck system on the Netherlands. Uh, cost a lot of money, uh, one of the big ones, but 75% would flow back to the government. We essentially form a similar type of role in making it easily accessible, cheap, and also reliable. So the effect is somewhat similar. They say 125,000 new jobs will be created, and in total 225,000 jobs will be managed. That's their uh, input. If we look at our own numbers, we can create 131,000 new ones. And the total will be something like 160, 170 uh, to manage uh, in our platform. Yeah, so that's a good story to talk to the regulators. Uh, but, do you, but, but do they also got uh, uh, some questions uh, about your platform? Uh, quite a lot, uh, especially the social security and the like. One of their initial concerns was, do these people make more than minimum wage? Quite important. You know, otherwise, you get lots of issues and you know, we're not slave traders in that sense, right? Absolutely, they do. They make quite a lot more than uh, uh, minimum income. They make between 11.12 and 11.92, which gives them enough space to make a living. We see some cleaners, for example, they work a lot, they're very motivated, and they can easily bring home 22, 25,000, uh, 100 euros a month, uh, basically, which is a very decent income uh, for these people. So we provide that option. There's another big benefit. Uh, one of the other things also is Right now, it's, it's difficult and expensive for individual workers to buy in their own uh, securities. 
and there's not a lot of tailor work and there's no any bulk or, or a scale benefits and so you can buy stuff cheaper. We could provide an active role in that, for example. And we want to also do that so that the level of security increases and the labor situation uh, improves uh, in that sense. It's also something we're working on. And there's quite a few of these things. For example, home care cutbacks. We can provide a more active role in a cheaper type of form of home care so that these people don't lose their jobs and can keep working through our platform instead of now where hundreds are being fined on a monthly basis because of these cutbacks. Something else we're, uh, we're talking about, a connection with the unemployment agency so we can actually get these people directly onto our platform, provide some measure of income, uh, remove uh, the black market, to also provide insight to the tax uh, organization so they can pull these taxes from these people and maybe we can reinvest that to improve their situation. This is kind of a zero-sum game. Government makes potentially a lot of additional money, pulls these uh, people into the white market, uh, where they mostly they currently are not, uh, most of them, and we can use some of that money to improve their situation immediately. It's kind of a win-win situation if we manage to pull this off. So all these kinds of things we're talking about, it's a two, three year trajectory, uh, of course, this kind of thing, but uh, definitely very high in our agenda. Very cool, and, and, and uh, we also uh, were together uh, with a discussion uh, in, in The Hague, and then uh, some people ask, okay, uh, is helping sharing economy? And they say, yes, we are. So. Uh, why do you say, uh, or, or, or why is helping share the economy? Uh, there's a lot of debate about this, actually. I know. Uh, it's also widened out to the question. Right, <laughs> right. So, uh, in the end of the day, it's sharing the economy because I feel a private individual is sharing something they have or can do with someone else apart from any type of official, huge corporate setup where different margins have to be paid to different people and companies and so forth. Very different type of setup. So, it's really private individual to private individual and they're offering each other something on a very small scale. We're only facilitating that. That's why in my mind is sharing economy. There is a lot of debate about uh, the, um, uh, what do you call that, the, the legal definition of time. Technically, sharing economy involves using something that otherwise would not be used. And according to the legal definition, time cannot be unused. You can involuntarily spend your time with doing nothing, but you're still spending your time doing nothing, even if you that's not how you want it. So because of that, there's a technical discussion if it then falls into sharing economy or not. This is more of a discussion for lawyers, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Content-wise, we're definitely in that space, and it has absolutely no bearing uh, on the impact we can provide on the market, if we're called sharing economy or not. No, I think it would be, be, be just uh, in a platform economy. So just, uh, You can definitely say that, yeah. And the, the big starters of the sharing economy discussion are Uber and, and Airbnb, uh, right? Yeah. And now in this definition, mostly they're not in that category either. So yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the answer is also non, uh, not uh, left or right, it's, it's, it's always in, in the middle. Yeah. But I think, yeah, looking to the definitions, I know uh, you're not sharing economy because then the, the time, like also say, you can't say, okay, I'm now free for an hour, so that's, that's a waste of time. Uh, it's not a waste, but it's, 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 uh, it's everybody that's own opinion on that. I'm really curious about uh, the, 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 the future, uh, uh, because um, you're now growing really fast, so, so what is your goal for the next five years? Uh, expand uh, both within the country in various cities into other cities and also we're heavily investing into our platform to make sure we add more value to both uh, the market the multi-sided platform side so both cleaners and households to make it even easier and more efficient to contact each other and get more value out of helping as helping them get good cleaning on a consistent basis okay. that's really where the main focus lies I, I think they are almost going to break down. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> sunshine. Went away. Yeah, <laughs> they're almost going to break down the building. So we have to 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 uh, to, to, to be fast. Last question. Um, uh, to, uh, uh, when, uh, when you look uh, to you as as a person, I mean, wait till the it's almost finished. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last question. When you look at you uh, as a person, when you look at your background, you really well, uh, uh, you're working for 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 for. Not so many companies, but you're working in, in many different roles. Uh, like you said, also uh, three months there, six months there. Yeah. So uh, how do you see your own future in, in, in helping? Uh, uh, aren't you going to be restless and think, okay, I want to do something uh, something else? Or what are your next steps? As uh, a right now, I think it's absolutely amazing, uh, to be honest, because we see the impact we provide to both is, is increasing over time significantly. The more time we spend into it, the better we make our platform, the more we learn from our customers and from our cleaners, uh, both of them the more value we can add to both of them. There's just so much work left to do in that area. I will definitely be very motivated for, uh, for quite some time. Uh, and especially if we, when we really start rolling into uh, setting something up with the government to improve the situation and society, Dutch society as a whole, this is something that makes me wake up fresh every morning. It's very exciting, uh, I think. Okay, so I wish you a good afternoon. Thanks for the Thank interview. You.